With us is David McVicker, who is one of the rare individuals that survives an attack by a serial killer. He is speaking to us on the eve of a parole hearing for James Monroe, a convicted serial killer. David McVicker, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Mr. McVicker, tell me your thoughts as Monroe faces the parole board. He may very well walk. It's really scary right now. He's said several times that he's going to kill other people. He's right now there. He's threatening to kill me. Uh, I know of three different calls this week that he he says that I'll be dead by tomorrow. Uh, I'm a little you know, nervous about it. That's pretty brazen, Somebody's David. That's pretty brazen that he will make these calls from the jailhouse. They are being recorded and actually threaten to kill someone from behind bars, knowing he's about to go before the parole board. I, I think that he's, he's, he's just, he doesn't get it. I, he, he, he's said it over and over again that he's going to kill people. Uh, his, the people that are at the prison, from what I understand, have said that he's good to go, that, that he's not a threat to society. But I know very different, and they're looking into the calls right now. I'm sure that uh, they're going to, they got to hold him. I, I don't, don't see how be they sure. can let him go Don't after be this. sure, David McVickers, about what they will do. As a matter of fact, a psychologist, Vonda Pelto, says that <clears throat> she is certain, certain that he is a threat. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very scary. I'm going to that parole hearing and he's got, he can't get out. I mean, he's, he said he's going to kill people. I mean, him, him getting out and being on the street would, I, would push me over the top. I, I, I couldn't live with that man I on the street. I know that you do not like to be haunted by the past. You don't like to relive what you went through. But I want our viewers to understand the level of violence that was inflicted on you. In 1974, I was kidnapped by William Bonin. Um, he took me to a field, put my T-shirt around my neck, raped me, and strangled me with the tire iron through the sleeves of the shirt. Uh, with what I thought was my last breath, I said, God help, and for some reason he stopped. Um, I, I went home and ended up uh, reporting it that night, and they found him about three weeks later, something like that. And he went to jail for 15 to life for what he did to me. That was before Megan's Law, and I, did, I had found out that he was doing the murders by reading the newspaper and seeing all these articles and just getting this feeling in my gut. After about a year of that, I finally called the Orange County Sheriff's Department and told them that they better find out where this guy is. I thought he would still be in jail, but he was out killing people. You are kidding. After what he, I, I didn't understand the sequence, David. So after his attack, a brutal attack on you, and you were just a young boy at that time. He gets out, and that's when he's doing the killings? Correct. Yeah, it was before Megan's Law. I was told that he was in for 15 to life, but I was wrong. He was in a, in a Tascadero State Prison, which is a mental facility. And uh, they let him out in 18 months. Everyone with me is David McVicker speaking out against the release of James Monroe. David, if the viewers want to contact anyone to join the fight to keep Monroe behind bars, who do they contact? I would absolutely love anybody who can to help me on this. I need all the support I can get. I have a website, rapedagain.com. On there, there are links that will go to change.org. And on there, I have a petition that you can sign. And I will be taking that with me to the parole board. Um, Let's repeat that very praying. slowly. It's www.rapedagain.org with all the links we need to fight James Monroe's release. But dot .com, not dot .org. Oh, let me repeat it then. Rapedagain.com. Correct? Correct? Yes, with thank me, you. With me, David McVicker. David, thank you. And I will be logging on and fighting the release of James Monroe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for those 21 kids. Thank you.